So we're here with a better here at ID Tech X show. So who are you? Uh, my name is Leonardo Santiago and I'm the CTO of Better. Uh, and with Better, what we want to do is a uh, large scale deployment of these devices. And we provide the whole solution, the hardware and the software, for cities to map air pollution in real time, basically. So this one uh, uh, senses pollution? Uh, it measures several pollutants and then measure, uh, with, the, with the parameters calculated with those pollutants we can calculate an air quality index and uh, with the air quality index which is based on the European directive uh, we can just uh, create this kind of heat map. Uh, that's an example of the city of Barcelona, this is where our company is based. You already have it set up? Uh, yes, we already have a setup in the city of Barcelona with the, well basically with the it seems a very. It seems like very uh, yeah very well positioned, like in a grid kind of Well, yeah, because uh, one of the things we do before making the deployment, we have a special like, geometry disposition. First, we calculate, in order to optimize the area cover and the number of sensors, we do this kind of like geometric distribution. So be first, before installing the nodes, we know where we're going to install the nodes. So that's why they are very aligned. And at the end, they just move a few meters, like 50 meters, depending on where we, where we oh, have a street bike. outdoors? Yeah, this is, this is mainly for outdoor pollution because measuring pollution indoors is fairly simple because the concentrations are usually higher. And one of the main challenges of measuring outdoor pollution is the concentrations are usually low, but this still can be very harmful for, uh, well, for your health, basically. So uh, what is the blue and the yellow? The yellow is worse than the yes. green? Yes, here, here you can see the color. 100 is just like above uh, the, well, above the healthy range. So this is real time? Uh, this is real time, yeah. We get a heat map every 15 minutes. And here you can see, for example, uh, this is, for example, can close this. If you go, this is, for example, in the middle of the night, this is like, you can see the timestamp, 8 in the morning, 7. Uh, well, this is when you start seeing like the high in the traffic in the main arteries of the city. So you have a partnership with Barcelona? Uh, where well, are you based, your company? Uh, our company is based in Barcelona. More than a partnership, basically, it was for them. Uh, they wanted to have that as a showcase. Uh, and it's a complementary system to what they already have. Like Normally, uh, the traditional AQM, air quality monitoring equipment, is very expensive and big. And with our solution, which is only a fraction of the price, they can install hundreds of nodes instead of... For, for the city of Barcelona, they only have 12. And oh, yeah. what they do now is to have, uh, they use mathematical models in order to extrapolate the pollution all across the city and they can create just a heat map of the average pollution once a month. And with our actual measurements, we do not need a complex mathematical model because, model because we have many measuring points and then what we just do is to create a heat map every 15 minutes. So it's better to have uh, your solution? Well, yes, because with these cities can actually know how pollution is moving just like during the day, every 15 minutes, and they can apply more cost-effective uh, solutions, for example, like moving the traffic or redirecting the traffic to other parts of the city. And if they already direct the, the traffic to other part of the city, they can know that actually it's working on, or it's just causing another problem at another part of the city. So in real time, they can understand uh, what traffic is causing what? Exactly. Instead of before, they were just like assuming that the actions were uh, working and they will narrow like months after they were doing some studies and they have to install other special equipment. Uh, but with this information, they can just know in one day if it's working or not. And if it's not working, they can just try something else. So is it a gas sensor? Uh, yeah, we use electrochemical sensors to measure some gases. We also have optical sensors to measure uh, particles, which is like pollen and dust and also like products from combustion. And we also included a noise pollution level. Uh, so we also like know how... It's some sort of microphone, exactly. So we also know how noisy the city is. Is that all the sensors that are will be required in the future? The, is it possible that the, some sensor is missing? Uh, that doesn't exist yet or something that could be uh, Well, for what the cities are measuring now, this is we have everything in a single package. Uh, and also, well, just everything in a very compact package. Uh, so that's what the cities are wanting to measure now, and that's what we have included. If there is any other sensor, for example, in the next version, we're going to, to include also a UV index, 
uh, so we can also well, just measure that. And besides that, we also measure temperature, relative humidity, and atmospheric pressure. And in, of course, this whole data, when you kind of like crowdsource this data and have more reference point than just one meteorological, meteorological station in one city, that can be used also for meteorological purposes, for example. And, uh it looks like there's a hundred or something in uh, Barcelona. For the city of Barcelona, we're just covering the well, the main part of Barcelona, and we have 136 nodes, I think. Nice. So how much is one? Uh, the price per node it's around five thousand euros, and it depends on the number of uh, well, on the number of sensors the city requires. The distance between nodes is between five hundred and seven hundred meters. That's what we recommend in order to have a nice uh, resolution heat map. Uh, uh, the advantages of all the device is that they're battery powered, the battery lasts for one year and they're completely autonomous and wireless. So it's a lot easier for the cities to install these kind of devices instead of uh, when you have to handle only a, a handful of devices, it's easy to install, but when you have to handle hundreds of devices, it's a lot easier just to put them on a street light or street furniture and they just forget about them for one year. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a solar? charge? One of the things we wanted to avoid was maintenance at all and also adding a solar panel will include uh, especially for cities that are like close to the sea or they have a lot of dust someone will have to anyways go and clean the panels and that's what we just wanted to avoid at all costs. So, now you have to change the battery every year. Yeah but if you include a solar panel you will have to go more often like every two or three months. Oh, really? Yeah, exactly. It, it depends a lot on the city, but we have a lot of dust now and also like the same particles we're trying to measure. Uh, they are the same particles that are going to be on top of the solar panels. And also it requires a little bit more of a study. When you're going to install these, you can install them anywhere. And when you're going to install something with a solar panel, you have to make sure that the sun is, is going to be actually hitting on that. And when you are wanting to install this in a very uh, urban scenario where you have tall buildings, then you have to make sure that, this, the, that your sensor is always going to be in a place where the sun that's going to get hit by the sun. So with this, you don't have to worry but about right that. But right now, it's a very long battery life. It's very good, one year, right? It's very yes. Long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so you wouldn't need you wouldn't need to worry about the sun. It's so little you need to charge to keep it going for another year. Uh, like, uh, well, yeah, but one of the things is also rechargeable. The rechargeable batteries are very big in volume, so we have a smaller non-rechargeable battery that is very compact, and that's how we can also optimize the size of the device. Because when you're installing these in a city furniture, one of one of the things that the city wants, especially some uh, connected green scene, green green cities, they want to have something that looks nice on a street post instead of the typical commercial white box that looks kind of ugly and yeah so uh, Atec Nea Solutions is a uh, we are not we are Atec Nea Solutions is an engineering company uh, we're based, based in, in Barcelona. Barcelona exactly yeah. we're based in Barcelona and we have a pool of around 60 engineers and last year we after working uh, five years with a project last year we decided to create a spin-off to commercialize this product is there a lot of competition in this field or not yet uh, there's a lot of movement in this field. One of the things is that it was hard to convince cities when you are trying to give them a solution that is only a fraction of the price of what they normally use. Uh, for example, one, uh, one full AQM station, they just need the whole uh, infrastructure and the devices only to measure one gas. It's, uh, the, the, the hardware to measure only one gas is between 10,000 and 15,000 euros. And you have to add several of those. Plus it requires maintenance, it requires electricity, air conditioning, it requires the servers and all the infrastructure. Uh, with all the buys, which is only 5,000, we measure already four gases plus particles. And we include the data connectivity and all the data is just in the cloud. Uh, we also have an open API so cities can offer the data for scientists research or basically cities can do uh, whatever they want with the data once so they have it. So you're ready now to launch for every city in the world? Yes, basically. Exactly, exactly. So that's what we are planning on doing now. We actually have uh, some nodes installed in Central Park in New York. Um, and this is just like starting to, to know how the sensors work also in different scenarios. Uh, there are also some cities in Spain that want to install nodes already and we're already in the conversations with them to install the nodes in these other cities.
it could be important for people who look for a flat and they would be like people who are allergic or have uh, they want to be in a cleaner area they can look at your map and say I want to live over there it's cleaner yeah exactly uh, this is one of the things that having this kind of data it could create uh, many types of many, many new businesses for example uh, for real estate this is something that eventually is going to happen that they're probably going to take advantage of having this kind of data and also not electric car companies should invest in your technology because that would be a great selling point for saying to the government we need to switch to Tesla <laughs> well, because uh, you can have a proof right here well, you can say hey something, the, something like that but th this is already uh, what we're trying to do is That's also to exactly to engage also citizens citizens in order to not to make uh, the car own the, or the car makers to be able to tell them to the city hey you need to buy Teslas now uh, basically the cities will do and the government what the government will do is just to apply this kind of regulations for them to basically just uh, stop having the uh, gasoline vehicles coming into the city and only allow them like eco vehicles coming into the city or the most polluted areas in the city.